Hello buddy, this is ZK, and this is going to be an Immortal Gates of Pirate game. Uh, in the pre-alpha still, we are playing on the new map, Lost Province. So brand new map, much bigger than the last one, a lot of fun stuff's going to happen. And also we have two factions playing right now. So the top uh, is Blue and Teal, we do have two Croft players, but on the bottom we have one Croft and one Aru. So get ready for some exciting gameplay of this new faction we haven't seen too much of so far. Uh, but yeah, starting the game off, we see nothing too unusual. Orange going for double E for collector. So E for the second resource allows you to collect a bit faster. Narrow side, only one of them. Then going for uh, Altar of the of the Warrior, which allows you to get the first base units. And then it's going to expand himself to try, yeah, exactly, just a fast expand. On the other side, Teal is going to do a very fast expand before Legion Hall. So the fastest expansion possible. Not not thinking there's opponent is going to be any type of cheese and early attacks or likes. And on this side, blue is probably going to take a bit longer. Yeah, exactly. Double E for a bit slower than orange, actually. So he wants he wants to get a bit of map control very fast, getting his uh, Safari out. Safari, these nice little spearmen of the Croft Empire. Going to try and get attack here and get a bit of map control, get some pyre. Pyre being the third resource of the game, which allows you to cast immortal spells. Immortal spells are, cannot cannot spawn any units, uh, but they're fun They're fun spells that can really help you win or lose a, lose a number of fights. So yeah, nice little micro here from Hydro Lakes from the blue player. Uh, just microing, ke keeping all his units alive by moving it back. If you move the units back to one of your towers like this, your units are going to be healed. So that's one of the special things of these citadels. One of the immortal abilities that allows you to beat these towers on top of these orange spots. Right now there's a direct tower on top of it, which you can kill, also giving you 25 power. And then you can build your own citadel on top of it, which allows you to heal your units, as well as giving you Hallowed Ground. Hallowed Ground is one of the abilities of Croft. Uh, which allows some units to uh, some extra stuff. As you can see, the Zafari here, once they're in Hallowed Ground, they gain a blue shield, which gives them extra defense. Uh, on the other side, we have Aru with the Rootway, which is a bit like this creep from Starcraft from Starcraft Reserve. The creep allows a uh, faster mana region, I believe, but right now there's not everything in it yet for the, for the faction, so not quite there yet. This is also a new map, and all the art is not in. It's all in pre-alpha, so we're still waiting to get a bit more before we can explain a bit more about how everything works. See, uh, yeah, uh, Aru do have these little mass hunters, a bit like Marines for Starcraft. Uh, so range attacks, not much HP. They do some decent damage, and they can move back and micro. They also have a Stiv-like ability called Offering, which costs a bit of HP and, in, in, and increases their range, attack speed, movement speed as well, I believe. So very strong move. On this side, red does have everything up, our, our Aru player. And then orange can try and attack here. You can try and deny maybe the Citadel from going up. But Teal is getting ready to expand here, getting everything up to have the Citadel, which allows the units to heal on top of a few other things. Uh, red moving back, just microing very well here. You can try and get that Zentari. Yep, get the Zentari, and just going to move back. Tries to lose as few units as possible. Some very nice micro here from both from both sides. Blue and Teal don't have as much micro potential. They just have to jump on the enemy and move back before it gets too dangerous. And as you can see here, just high ground vision. And with the high ground vision, you want to be careful as you don't see what's going to coming at you. But yeah, still a little fight here. Orange playing very well, just keeping your units back, making sure they don't die. And oh, it's going to get another unit here. Perfect micro here from Orange. On this side, we see that that we have a few scouts here just scouting around the map, making sure, trying to figure out what's going on. The tower here, and there's an infuse, the mortar ability that allows your units to go much faster, attack stronger. And there's going to be a recall from the other side, which makes his units go back to his base. And yeah, you can see they all spawn back. Works for you and your ally. So most of the mortar spells work on both sides as well. So very useful to have as both teams, as both teams really want to work together. And no one did, when your ally has a, sometimes an ability that can save your butt. And yeah, Teal just going for a lot of Zentari here. Orange, Orange going for these Icors. Icors, a bit like Hellions from StarCraft 2, which have a small, uh, which shoot a beam that does a little bit more, more damage in the line, as you can see here. Uh, so yeah, Teal, Green really has to be careful. He's going to go back to tower. When the Centauri are in the Hallow Ground, they do have range attack, so it's a bit smarter to stay in there as much as possible. A really nice micro here from Orange. But yeah, Orange being careful here. Going to move back a bit. And Blue's just roaming the map, trying to see if the, there was another expansion that went up somewhere else. But Orange still only on two bases, so they're going very tech heavy on their side. On Red and Orange side, just complete tech heavy. And it's really wonder what they're going for. We're going to have to see what units pop out of Red. Red side, just one I-Core, so nothing too big right now. Blue's just going for a Dervish attack, so Dervish, very uh, low gas heavy, have an AoE attack, and great for taking out, oh man, amazing for taking out the Mass Hunters like this. To have a stronger attack against uh, light units, and Mass Hunters are light. So Red's going to have to move back and take a, take his losses, unfortunately. But when he's back...
Barry should be able to defend pretty well. Oh, at the same time, Theo is going on the other side. Going to try and do some damage. Going for... Uh, going to check if anything else is going on the opponent's side. Checking for towers and the likes. And sees nothing here. This... Uh, the pirate camp was already taken. Blue's going to take this one as well. Uh, there's a warden here. The warden try to do some damage, but it's going to have to move back. Two wardens are going to try and do some damage on the orange side over there as well. But yeah. Uh, blue trying to get as much damage as he can right now. Orange and red going to try and meet up. Uh, it's going to help to try and defend this. And red's going to have to move out, move tech up into something a bit bigger. And there we go. We have the resonance. Very, very much tanks from StarCraft. So you can siege up and do a lot of damage. Oh, he's going for the rocks. And you get, when the rocks open up, it's going to be a full entrance to the main. Orange was aware of that. I started building a citadel to be sure of it, to try and protect that. Zephyrs are here to try and help. And yeah, the Zephyrs are going to help defend right now. Uh, Red is trying to get a bit more fire. He probably has a, an idea on what to do with his fire. Oh, he forgot to get the fire. No, okay, he's going to send his mass hunter right back. And yeah, the resonance here is going to be very hard for Blue and Teal to try and push through them. Exactly, they're just going to do the recall from the from evil. And Teal decides he wants to stay back, try to do a bit more damage. It might not be the good move. He might end up losing all his units, but no, he reacts in time. And as you can see in the moral, no unit really that much faster than others. Some are very fast, but in the early game, all units are similar speed, so there's a lot of engagement that can happen all over the map. Yeah, okay, so the Dervish is going to try and move forward. Not that strong against, against Zephyr. Zephyr has pretty much countered them very well. Are trying to do a bit more damage, and Blue got a bit more fire. Are always useful can help you win fight on the other side red's going for a big push here he has his own wraith bow and the resident he's gonna try and just kill the workers and then head back afterwards yeah uh yeah so just going for a few workers and then we're gonna try and move back and hope to not die same time red to go for his third base orange should be going for this pretty soon he has a few units left over on the side there but he's not gonna worry about them too much uh yeah red can check if there's a base here there is not orange does have a separate here in case just to check out always good to have a few units on the map uh to view if your opponent's going to come through. <laughs> and yeah, uh, Ninfu is going down here, increasing attack speed, but Orange does have the Wind Step, which is a, an ability a bit like the StarCraft 2 Stalker, which allows the unit to uh, teleport somewhere else on the map. And yeah, as soon as that happens, Blue tried to go for a kill here, but unfortunately it was not enough, and Red is there to help defend his ally. On top of the map, Sentinels here, great anti-air units. You can try and move in and mm, wondering what, they're, what they intend to do as they're only anti-air units. Uh, air superiority, really. So they can't do too much damage. They can scout up around, but if their opponent has air units, it's really good to deal with them. But yeah, not too many air units. Uh, the Centauri coming in right now, that's going to be a cute move. Uh, the Wardens can stop and take them out as they don't attack here. And yeah, the Free Centauri is just going to come in here, do as much damage as they can. And yeah, the moats probably shouldn't fight. Yeah, exactly. The moats are going to pull back, go to the tower here or something. And at the same time, while all the units are pulling back, Blue and Teal are going to try and position themselves to try and do some type of attack. But no, Blue is staying on his side. And yeah, the Centauri are going to go down, killing another moat there. Always good to kill a few workers, trying to keep your economy ahead. And yeah, Red and Teal. Teal has a few Sentinels, going to move them back. Red and Orange not quite there yet. Warden's coming in, going to see the scout. Not sure if he wants to expand quite yet. But yeah, Blue uh, has a third base. Didn't get the E for quite as fast. Personally, I always like getting the E for... Uh, and he's going to try to move in again. And Orange still didn't expand. Didn't take a third. A third is really useful in these type of fights. Uh, he might want to move back now if he sees this happening. Yeah, Orange is going to move back with his Zephyrs. Really dangerous move. Make sure at the same time the Red Flare has... Oh, Red Sister is very powerful. Uh, they can cast a spell that... Yeah, one unit... You can cast on enemy units and one of those units die. They turn into I-Cores. I-Cores are little. Very high DPS units. A bit like Infest Terrors. But now Orange's base is infested. A lot of uh, Absolvers all over the place. Very hard to get rid of those zone control units. Do a lot of damage really quickly. Orange trying to move in as fast as he can. And yeah, Red's going to try to move in as well. But the zone control is very powerful right now. All of the... Yeah, killed all the workers. And they're going to kill quite a few buildings. Very dangerous. And it's going to be a recall once more. So Blue's going to be able to move back and not lose too many units after killing a few. A few of his opponent's building. Uh, Orange is going to have to rebuild them eventually. And yeah, he has his Arc Mother. But Red does have his Dread Sisters. And with Dread Sisters, he is going to be able to do a decent amount of damage. Hopefully, uh... If he can kill the kill these units, he's gonna be able to transform them into uh, to Icros, which are help reinforce his army on the go. Ah, uh, yeah, Sentinels coming here to try and deal with Warrens. That's what he was always all about. The Sentinels, anti air units. So Orange will have to move them back to where he has some anti air, but not quite yet. Uh, this game, they're still both on free base after ten minutes. It, it's pretty normal actually. Okay, those sent. Oh man. Yeah, as soon as those units, yeah, Icor's going to come out. So yeah, the Dread Sisters are turning everything into Icor as fast as they can. The attack is going on. There's a lot of units here. There's only one Resident. Resident goes down from the throne. Blades of the Godhead, a, 
a strong attack is telegraph. And yeah, uh, oh well, uh, Mallet. Malus uh, used his ability here to make the mana regen faster on the Dread Sisters, uh, but unfortunately Red does not have quite as much left, and with the throne that's going to be very hard to take care of this. Orange is moving in to try and help, and the Dread Sisters can still use their ability. Unfortunately they were not able to break through there. A great defensive play by Blue and Teal, having the Absolvers here er, for the zone control from the very start, very helpful there for them. And yeah, Incubator here as well. Incubator. Uh, creates Icros on his own uh, using his spell casting ability. So, fun unit. So, this Aru version is all about making a lot of free units. Free units take cost a bit. You have to kill some opponent units and likes. So yeah, uh, so yeah, that's what Mix is all about right now. He's really trying to get value out of these the high composition units. Yeah, the Warden is coming out. And yeah, Pyre is free. Pyre got out. And Teal and Orange here are gonna have a small skirmish. Uh, Red might try to trap him in there. Yeah, exactly. That's what Red's gonna go for. So yeah, uh, okay, Red can set up here, and Teal will not be able to get out of here. Uh, Red did say, try to uh, move out, my cat is on my lap right now, but that's okay. Teal is very much stuck, and Blue's going to have to use a recall if he can. So that would be a smart play, and is he? Yeah, exactly, the Icor goes, uh, the ability for all these units one day that are going to turn into... Are they? No, they, they weren't in the circle anymore, okay. Yeah, because usually they turn into Icors, but Icors do spawn and do a lot of damage when they are. Not much of HP, and they're totally surrounded. Blue saw it coming and surrounded his opponent. And uh, luckily for him, Drago was was uh, being careful, and Recall's unit is able to save most of them. Very great move from Red. Really expanding only on the top right side, so just on the line on the right side, while Blue's expanding all over his side as well. So yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, blood dance. We don't see much of those at all. Uh, assassin type units are really good for sniping the strong, a few strong units. We don't see that much of them, but good play here. Oh no, two has misvalued units and is going to lose a lot of them here. Be a dangerous play. Oh, man. That was a lot of Zentari. That's a very expensive play. And yeah, the Bloodbounds are moving forward, <laughs> trying to uh, do a bit of damage. Very cute play from, uh, from a red player, Mixu. It's going to be harder to take care of uh, her units right now. Yeah, orange, red moving forward. Very close here with a lot of mass hunters trying to take care of any type of air. But again, it's very hard to take care of take care of air without, uh, without any type of dedicated end here. Uh, but we're going to try with the Mass Hunters, they might be able to do it. Attacking here, going to try and take out this base. He might get surrounded again, but Blue and Orange are having a fight over there. There's another recall going out for Orange, he, he was in a bit of a bad position, his opponents are a bit faster than him. So he recalled somewhere where he can be safe, his units are going to come back. Uh, he still didn't take this base, I guess there's no Aether here, so it's not as uh, interesting for him. Uh, Safari going for the fight at the tower. The tower is going to use his uh, Blaze of Godhead, a, a strong telegraph attack. He can do some damage, at the same time Red is moving forward. And yeah, Orange is going to be able to move back to make his own opponent move back. The Cascades are out. Cascades are very good for dealing with any type of strong air units. As you can see, they, they just explode with the with the Cascader attack here. These still guys, the Cascaders. Yeah, Orange going for a great fight here. Red, same time, going. He's going to keep moving forward. Aru, yeah, he's just going to go right on them. He's, gonna, he's trying to use the Incubator's ability. Uh, the Dread Sister and Incubators to have some free units. But doesn't seem to do that much damage, unfortunately. The magic is going to die here. Is able to take out the base. Orange and blue are still fighting on the other side here. Orange trying to do the best. The shard has a strong uh, spirit caster ability, like a storm like attack to call the Tempest. To cast that down, that can do a lot of damage. But they're going for a post round now. Red and orange are going to try and surround their enemy. And there's an infuse going on here. Orange a bit far back. Oh man, that's a lot of. Uh, Redsters using their spell to try and get some Icars out of it. A lot of Icars spawning, so free units. Not exactly free as they did cost them spell, but they do a lot of damage. And Red is going to keep moving forward. The Dervish are out. <laughs> the Dervish going to get jumped on by the Bloodbounds. So I'm going to move back after doing a lot of damage. And Red and Teal, Red and Orange seem set to take this game right now. The Tempest doing some damage, and that's going to be GG from Teal. And Blue's going to keep going, and GG from both sides.